Now this is the video editing page and there's a lot of functionality here, some of which has been covered in other videos, but I'll provide some explanations for each of the things here. So when you go to edit your video, this is actually the first page you'll land on after you upload or create a video. This title is for your own internal reference, so it won't be visible to recipients unless you're posting these videos on a LinkedIn message or a Facebook message, um, then the title will actually be available, uh, visible. So make sure that you do have a title on your videos. The description will be visible on the video landing page and will appear directly below the video. So whatever you include here will be included on the video information page. You can add tags to your videos so you can help keep organized and it'll help you sort your videos based on those tags. You also have complete control of the privacy of your videos so you can have them be featured and be publicly viewable on our featured web page and also searchable on Google, or you can have them be private so they can only be visible to those people who have the URL, or you can have them as a draft and they won't be visible to anyone. You have some disable options here so that you can disable the tracking pixel and there's some specific applications for that sharing so you can actually have this video shared in your video library with other team members. The next thing is your call to action options. So um, this will open up the call to action creation menu and you can add as many or as few call to actions as you want by clicking that blue plus button. And when you go here, you can create a new CTA and this is the same call to action menu that is on the call to action tab from the dashboard. After you've added the CTAs you want, we also have this exit intent modal option, which is a cool little pop up that appears on the video landing page. When someone goes to navigate away from the page, a pop up appears with a second chance to click your CTA buttons. Here's where you can turn on or off the emoji response buttons. And then here's where you can turn on or off Facebook comment engine. So when people you want people to leave comments on your videos or you do not, you can turn those on or off here. You can also password protect your videos. So if you want those to be protected by a password, just enter the password there and the recipient will have to enter the password in order to view the video. This is the design section where you can change the color of the play button and the play bar. So choose the color you want and you can have that also be set as a default. You can use the hex option in case you have a specific color you wanna use. And like I said, set that as a default, so you only have to set that, brand, uh, that branding up one time. We also have a background option so that your background of your videos, you can have be completely custom. You can either use one of the ones from our library by just typing a word in here, like the word library, It'll give you a huge section to choose from, or you can upload your own videos. The only limitation is they have to be in 1280 by 720 pixels so that the image looks good on the background. The next thing is your CTA control options. So you can actually control the color of your CTA buttons and set those as a default as well. So you only have to set up your design elements one time and every video you create or upload will have the same set of design features as long as you've clicked this default option. The last tab is the video tab where you can set your videos to autoplay. However, videos set to autoplay will not have sound included. You can also include an SRT file to put captions onto your videos. That's a very nice feature for especially when people are viewing on mobile. You can also trim your videos so you can choose when you want your video to start or end by moving the slider along to the point where you want it to start, clicking start, start, and moving the slider along to where you want the video to end and clicking end. You can also choose your custom thumbnail graphic by moving to a point in the video that you're happy with and then clicking set current frame. Now the thumbnail GIF will start from that point. You can also attach a playlist of videos, which is a very cool feature in case you have a series of videos you want to have played back to back without having to have the person click another link or open another email. The videos will just play automatically. You can attach as many videos as you want to the playlist by searching your library based on title. And again, this options over here, this is the button you want to use to attach the video to the email. So just press the copy link and thumbnail button and it will attach the video to your clipboard along with the link and the thumbnail. And you just paste that into the email or social channel or text message and you'll get the full animated GIF and the link to the landing page. Do not use the drop down options here for copying the still thumbnail and link. Just use this big button to copy the link and the thumbnail at once. There are options to go directly to email, Twitter, LinkedIn, or Facebook, 
But if you want to attach to a, a specific email, this is your button to use. And then there's the embed option, which again is only for embedding videos onto the website. If you want to embed a video onto a website or a landing page, this is the code you would use. This is not for emails.